It is Sleep Awareness Week, and we are trying to help you sleep better today. And this morning, we are focusing on the kitchen. Nutritionist and celebrity health coach Karina Heinrich, she's here to break down the best food practices to help you get a better night's rest. Good morning to you. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So for starters, what is the best time to eat for a restful night? So you really want to close up your kitchen at least two to three hours before bedtime to allow your body to fully digest before sleep. Hmm. Fair enough. All Sometimes right. I do that, and then I'm, <laughs> I'm hungry by the time I go to bed. No. <laughs> so, all right, so let's get into it. What are some of the best food practices? What, what kind of foods are we talking so first and foremost, of course, as a nutritionist, I'm going to tell you to eat your fruits and veggies, <laughs> but really studies have shown that you want to eat a well-balanced diet. You want to eat the rainbow, things like kiwis, broccoli, spinach, bananas. You want to pick lentils, chicken, fish. I love eggs. Most of us start our day with eggs in the morning, but I love to end my day with around one to two eggs. Hmm. But really, no matter how you're ending your meals at night, you want to watch out for heavy foods like steaks, burgers, pasta dishes, even healthy foods that I love, like beans, lentils, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, that leave us with a really full feeling. Going to bed with that full stomach definitely can lead to disrupted sleep. Yeah. And for all of you salt lovers, you know who you are, mm -hmm. you want to limit salty foods because that can lead you to want to drink more liquids to hydrate closer to bed. Hmm. And, and speaking of drinking more, not alcohol, but Chanel admittedly <laughs> keeps bottles of water by her bed every night. Is, is that a good idea? Chanel, I love that so much. Oh, I actually do recommend <laughs> keeping water bottles on your nightstand so you have them ready first thing in the morning to ah. wake up your body. Mm. But just like with foods, we want to cut off all liquids at least two hours before bed to reduce the times we're getting up in the middle of the night, which mm. we do often if we're drinking that water before bed. Right. Our producers are amazing. What was that picture? Yeah, I have no idea where that year. picture came from. Are there any <laughs> beverages that can help with sleep or any that we should avoid? Well, at night, I absolutely love a hot cup of chamomile tea mm. because it's filled with calming, sleep-promoting antioxidants that we want. Uh, and it can actually maybe help reduce insomnia, which is a huge problem for so many. But I need to mention alcohol. Okay. Now, a lot of us use alcohol as that sleep aid. And in many cases, it does help us relax, fall asleep. But it could prevent you from staying asleep. Another big no-no I should mention, especially for early morning, is caffeine. Hmm. I'm a huge coffee and green tea drinker, but again, you want to make sure you're not drinking it too close to bedtime. And in fact, I recommend cutting off all caffeine by early afternoon, as early as like noon, hmm. because it's been shown to possibly reflect nighttime sleep. And we really don't want anything to affect our precious sleep time, especially as a mom of three very active kids. <laughs> hey, hey, Karina, can, a, a lot of people do uh, intermittent fasting. Mm. Does that does that interfere with sleep? Does that help sleep? It's actually been shown to help with sleep, but the trick is a lot of people think they're intermittent fasting when they have their morning coffee and they're adding creamer in that coffee. Mm. As soon as you add that creamer, you just broke your fast. But yes, intermittent fasting has been shown to help with better sleep. Hmm. And can you give us some important sleep strategies, like what we should be doing? Hmm. Absolutely. So staying physically after active can help get you a better night's sleep. But just like with food and liquids, I'm going to tell you to stop, cut off that workout time at least three to four hours before bed minimum. We want to calm our bodies at night, find ways to relax leading up to bedtime. I know it's hard when you have kids and you're ready for them to get into bed, but limit that screen time, especially <clears throat> social media. And I'm a culprit of that. Instead, take a warm bath, read a good book. I also recommend maintaining that consistent sleep schedule, not only during the week, work week, but also on the weekends, which is harder for a lot of people to do. And if you take a nap during the day, which is totally okay, I wish I could, make sure it's never more than 20 to 30 minutes long or really could affect that nighttime sleep as well. Really good advice. I'm like, yeah. I'm looking at the things on the table. It's clean eating. It's like yes. the things we know to do. Right. Uh -huh. Colorful. Don't do them. Mm -hmm. Karina, good exactly. advice. Thank you. And of course, chocolate, too. Well, there's that. <laughs> Dark chocolate. Yum. All right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.